my beloved, pray the Lord again. Welcome to our next episode. My smile is because God is good. He loves us, he loves me, he takes good care of us. And so in the midst of whatever situation, I say, pray the Lord. And welcome again in our times, in our generation, to live a life that God will cherish. Because we cherish him, he cherishes his love, we cherish his care. And so we continue on, but first, a word of prayer as we dive into this word. Father God in heaven, we appreciate that you are ever, ever loving and caring. We pray the Lord you bless our time together as we share in this word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, our God is good. And the personalities that we have been looking at, we have been sharing about, they have not left me the same. They have taught me a great deal. And so right from the very beginning, I would just want to ask you, is there anything that you have picked, if you've been listening in, tuning in, is there anything that actually you can state fully that this God has worked on my life, God has worked on my family, God has worked on my situation. And so that actually we grow from one level to another. And so I just want to leave it with you, thinking through. It's a meditation. It's a self-examination. And so that it is not just a mere, you know, episode, but at least having an impact for which it was made. And so we appreciate God that we have yet another episode. And we are still following the name of the prophet that we introduced and this prophet is prophet Joel. My brothers and sisters, this name Joel has worked a great deal on me because when I analyzed it, the self-proclaimed name, God proclaiming his own name. He says, the Lord, the Lord. Remember as we read, and as we read from Exodus chapter 34, when he was passing before Moses, he said, the Lord, the Lord, my name. And so his name is for generations. That this name, Yahweh, is God, never changes. So the name Joel, the Lord never changes. And just like we wound up that episode, we said that the God is favor, God is favor that was upon his servants then. May the same favor rest upon us during this generation. But of course we said, that God also does not leave sin and he punished. And so he punishes sin. Remember the times he punished Sodom and Gomorrah? He punishes sin. Remember the times that he punished the children of Israel over and over again? He punishes sin. But his mercies remains new every morning. And we say, praise the Lord. That actually his mercies are new every morning. So in the name of Joel. And so we go into the message of this man. Yahweh is God. He was sent to speak. But before I say he was sent to speak, remember that he is one of the, the shortest prophetic books. How many chapters? The Masoretes, the people who organized them, there are only three chapters. One of the shortest, but one of the most popularly quoted in the Bible. Because we shall look at some of them, maybe some other time. But let's see. He was sent to speak oracles or messages or prophecies to the southern kingdom of Judah. And this one I, I mentioned some time, and I say it again. He was sent to speak. And you know that a prophecy is the message that comes, and the speaker is just used of God to deliver the message that has been sent to speak, speaking on behalf. This prophet is did their work. And so he prophesied to the returning exiles coming from Babylon and Persia that had been out. But still, many, many other atrocities were impending. They were yet to come, depending on what they were to do 
basing on their own actions. But let us just read a few verses, Joel, to set the basis. Now, chapter 1, and but remember the name Joel, the Lord is God. Now, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the third the son of Pethuel, an invasion of locusts. This one, one of the most quoted ones, anyway. Hear this, you elders. Give ear, all the inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days, or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children to another generation, generation to generation. Verse 4. What the cutting locust left, the swimming locust has eaten. What the swimming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten. And what the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. Now that passage, that verse 4, is full of meaning. And we shall, these are some of the things we shall keep digesting, maybe one after another. But because of the time, we may not finish everything now, but it is full of message here. This repetition, locust, but categorized kind of locusts here. Verse 5. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the sweet, sweet wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. That's also messageful. For a nation has come up against my land, powerful and beyond the number. Its teeth are like lion's teeth, and it has the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vine and splintered my fig tree. It has stripped off their back and thrown it down. Their branches are made white. Lament like a virgin, wearing sackcloth for the bridegroom of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering are cut off for the house of the Lord, from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn the ministers of the Lord. The fields are destroyed. And so the message continues on, on and on. And so Joel was sent to speak a message to the people. And he is clearly known where he comes from. He's clearly known his parents, where they, who, who, who they were. And of course, actually, the Hebrews would have their people known by their names. And the more we mentioned the name, actually, they would actually outline and define the lineage, the tribe from which you came. Now, as you read this chapter one, you'll discover that actually there had been economic and spiritual decline in Judah. Many things, when they said actually, we're going to, your wine is going to be cut off from your lips. You are going to drink, but it's cut off. Your vines are, you know, are left bare. It was actually a disaster. So it was a season, the way you see in chapter one of National Morning, things were not well. Now, they are talking of recent locusts that had devastated the land in verse four. So it was really national morning. It was not nice time at all. And these times would come. These times would be there because of the kind of lives that these people were living, the actions that they were exhibiting. Now, God is a, remains God, full of mercy, but punishes sin. And his punishment is intentional for someone to return he is actually he just does it to wave you back to bring you back into line to keep your lane to keep orderly to keep moving but straight and so this is our god who desires straightness he does not just punish to kill he does not just punish to to make the one someone who is being punished to suffer but Yes, there is suffering. Yes, there is pain. But the intention is molding, molding, making new, making fresh. And so Prophet Joel was sent 
to get the people's attention. Sent to get the people's attention in the moment of decline and depression. And you know, when there's decline and depression, there's usually confusion, loud, loud crying, loud mourning, loud shouts. But he comes, and just like John puts in that a voice is heard in the desert. It could be a lonely voice, it could be a simple voice, but he wants to catch the attention. And just a few that will catch, and these days we have a lot of noises that stop us from hearing what God is saying. Noises of wailing, noises of crying, noises of you no know, desperateness, noises of there are so many. And even within our lives, you may be there and there is a lot of shouting in your ears, a lot of shouting, and you have no time to concentrate on the voice of God. Now, Joel was sent to speak and draw the attention of his listeners. And so in this case, Joel teaches the lesson, praise the Lord. And the lesson that Joel teaches that apart from the recent locust that had devastated the land, the invasion that was, people were encouraged to look ahead. Praise the Lord. Now, and this is something that I've learned, that the situation that you are in shouldn't stop you from lifting your eyes up. Lifting your eyes above the situation. Lifting your eyes up above. And so that you look into the future, you look into tomorrow, you look into the next moment, that now it's season maybe to feel this way, but God who is faithful, the Lord is God who never changes. You look ahead. And so Joel was calling the people to look forward. The terrible day of the Lord will come, yes, but he encourages them to look forward. Now what is key is the great and terrible day of the Lord, the coming judgment. Look ahead, and this could be um, something that actually is purifying anyway, when you know what is coming, you straighten yourself. For instance, a student who is in school and knows that at the end, we had a school where we were in our O level, from day one in S1, they would tell us at the end, and by the way, that is the time I had, I, that's when I heard about the word elimination. So the slogan was, at the end, you do perform badly elimination. So everyone kept elimination, by the way, elimination at the end. Now, because we foresaw elimination at the end, and it will happen by the poor performance, they would eliminate you that you don't merit. And so because of looking ahead to see what was coming, we were encouraged to work harder and better, praise the Lord. And so that you avoid certain things. And just like I've said this in some cases, and you have heard about six Ps, that prior proper preparations prevents poor performance. Now, Joel tells the people to look forward. But as you look forward, could be meaning the day of the Lord, and when the day of the Lord comes, and we shall find time and talk about the day of the Lord entirely in the scriptures. What does it mean? And what must we do to share more about the day of the Lord? And when, you, when it comes, what will happen? Now, when Joel talks about the day of the Lord, he tells them it's a, to be a great and terrible day. And so what does it mean, friends? That when it comes, where it will be joy for those that have lived their lives repentantly. In repentance, making fresh, making new, looking back and putting right. But those that have remained undermined, those that have remained stubborn, those that have remained terrible, it will also be a terrible day. And so what I have talked about the elimination, elimination, elimination during my school days, you are encouraged to work harder and better. And so that actually you, you are able to attain something at the end. And I pray that actually God is in heaven. He has our prayer. That actually as you work, as you serve him, work hard and better. And so actually you align yourself according to his principles, according to his statutes, according to his laws, according to his regulations. Because he does not desire the death of a sinner, but rather a sinner to repent and live. Praise the Lord. And that's actually that's our God. The Lord is God, the name is Joel. And so he shows God that God uses nature 
Joel shows that actually God uses nature and other events to teach his people a lesson. Now, some of the things that I've, I've, I've discovered from these scriptures are, you know, he mentions about famine. Famine is an occurrence in nature, and that actually, um, no food. Why is there that food? Why famine? There could be many things that actually we are learning from here, and God uses that. Could be plagues. Plagues are natural occurrences. Like we, we hear about landslides, uh, you know, um, uh, rain, uh, rain causing uh, trouble, um, fires. These are natural occurrences. And so just like we've been talking about the locusts here, it could be something. And God uses this to, to teach his people. Maybe we have, we have talked about violent weather, whether that is not, you know. We have had many of these things happen. But who knows? Maybe when they happen, God is asking us to pay attention. But sometimes what happens shouts louder in our ears and we don't hear God's little voice. Remember what happened to Elijah on the, on the mountain? That actually when he saw the wind boom, 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 blowing, so that maybe God was in the wind, but God was not in the wind. You know, when he had an earthquake, boom, 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 he thought actually God was in the earthquake because they were breaking the rocks, but God was not in the earthquake, whatever it was, until, pray the Lord, that he had a little smaller voice. So friends, in all these occurrences, invading armies, you know, plagues, famine, diseases that are devastating the world, shall we be able to hear the voice of God? That actually most of some of these things are come so that actually we pay attention, so that we hear the voice of God. Small it may be, but thankfully, Prophet Elijah leaves us a lesson that actually God was not in the fire, God was not in the, in the earthquake. God was not in the wind, but a little small voice. And so Joel comes to teach us something here, that we need to look beyond the situation. And I urge you to look beyond the situation. God enabled me to look beyond the situation in which I am now. It could be the situation of good, feeling good, merry, and happy. Yes, God helped me to look beyond the situation. Is it a situation which, of, which is of gloom, suffering, and whatever it is? Yes, but it's also seasonal. May God help that I look beyond the situation. Now, as I say, I, I, I'm meaning you. May God help you. May God help us to look beyond the situation. Are they invading locusts, cutting locusts, destroying locusts, you know, swarming locusts, and whatever they are? May God enable us to look beyond the situation. Now, God does this that we he, he gets our attention and so that we live better so joel testifies that the impending judgment can be averted and this is the message averted that if people listen repent fast and return to the lord the reason why there is something very very magnificent in chapter 2 verses 12 to 17 just reading very quickly about the return to the Lord. And he said, yet even now, pray the Lord, yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with the fasting, with the weeping, and with the mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Now remember what we read about him. God, I mean, the Lord is God in Exodus chapter 34 when he was passing before Moses. Similar words. Slow to anger and never bowing in steadfast love. And verse 14, who knows whether he will not return and relent and leave the blessing behind him. A grain, of, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Now, verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly. Consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, Lord, and make not your heritage 
a reproach a byword among the nations why should they say among the peoples where is their god friends this is a message for you this is a message for me and we popularly quote this during for churches that have seasons lent season um the fasting season this is very very important and just like i promised we shall come again with this message in joel in another episode because i found it actually richer very very rich and we shall have a little bit more time there judgment can be averted and look he says return and leave so in joel we find that there is a promise of destruction there's a promise of destruction there is the promise of destruction but there's a, there's a promise of restoration a promise of blessing a promise of prosperity for those who are found to be righteous and you discover that in Joel chapter 2 verse 32 you can read on that so but in on sin God's judgment will be powered now there is a mix here deliverance the promised land but also punishing the sin that devastates the earth now friends as i turn to the finish of this episode three fold restorations that were promised in joel and as i talk about it god desires you and i and anybody else as we drive around as we walk around there is something that god desires for us as his people made in his own image like he was he is and he will be he will always remain the lord one god promises in this material restoration through divine healing of the land and when you read verse 21 of chapter 2 he says fear not O land be glad and rejoice for the lord has done great things fear not and he promises healing the land you read on up to verse 27 we may not have the time to read there but material restoration through divine healing of the land and so we find here a message for you and me during our time and we have always prayed that oh lord heal our land that we may have what to eat we need food and the land this material restoration and when we talk about the land we are meaning everything that you know that gives us livelihood your job whatever you are doing to earn but of course whatever not what everything that but something that glorifies god that actually within the mandate that we're given to serve god by what you do with your hands and of course i'm gonna go down to do anything whatever it means that they are earning their livelihood that might again it might be something that will bring punishment but i'm talking about material possessions material restoration something that can glorifies god and then another that's material and we pray that god gives us enough that we can be able to take our children to school that we may be able to sustain ourselves that we can do able to handle situation as they come number two is that there will be spiritual restoration through the divine outpouring of the spirit remember he says um in verse 28 chapter 2 that and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men and shall dream dreams and your young men see visions now spiritual restoration we pray that this spiritual restoration comes our time praise the lord and this is it that's number two spiritual restoration through the divine outpouring and we shall keep talking about this because i found it very very rich and then number three of course actually before i go to number three this spiritual uh, spiritual restoration that came back that came to, to its fullest on the pentecost in acts chapter two and then we pray there for the same and then number three he talks about national restoration through the divine judgment on those that are unrighteous and read chapter three and discover that actually there's judgment then the lord will judge 
the nations, national judgment, national restoration. Friends, I pray that actually this message in the book of Joel, and we shall add more, we shall have, have, shall have more about this, that actually God will give you material restoration, that God will give you spiritual restoration in your life, and that salvation will come when people repent and turn back to God. And so Joel, the message could have come in the midst of very many challenges, many, many shoutings in the ears that people may not have had time to listen, time to hear, time to repent. But the message is, Joel, the name, the Lord is God. And so take your leaf, take your time and think through, meditate. And possibly, if there's anything that actually maybe you would wish to learn a little bit more, uh, find time and maybe ask a question or two, and we shall provide those lines at, at some moment. But we're saying, may God take good care of you as you consider the Lord is God, who never changes in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all of us say, Amen and Amen.